Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair, now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. When we think about something that brings out the best in us, it usually involves helping someone else. By donating plasma at a Griffel Center, you can help save millions of lives and show your good side to the world. You'll join thousands of people who donate safely each week, so patients get the plasma-derived medicines they rely on. And you'll be rewarded up to $1,000 your first month. Learn more at grifflesplasma.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, a lot of us enjoyed Mortal Kombat over the weekend, so the fact that Gilbert Gottfried is dropping this is very, very cool. Uh, well, I don't know if it's Gilbert, but somebody decided yeah. to redo the Mortal Kombat theme with voiceovers from Gilbert Gottfried. So, yeah, Gilbert really didn't think I had any clue that this was like, going to happen, and it's just the way that they pulled this off is brilliant, BJ. I feel like they, he, should, he should be part of this. I really do. Um, what they did is the uh, the creators uh, paid for a cameo video of Gilbert saying all the iconic lines, which is awesome because Gilbert is doing cameo. So they're like, Gilbert, just say these lines. And Gilbert's like, sure, you pay me. And uh, then they put all those lines into the Mortal Kombat song. Text your That is awesome. Oh, you know, on Cameo's website, like they, they sometimes like the videos are up there. I wonder if that video is up there of him just saying those lines because I kind of just want finish him of 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 Gilbert Godfrey just for my own personal enjoyment. I have to tell you that was that that's very creative. I never thought of that. I never thought that hey, just have a Cameo guy, you know, say some things that you can mash up into something. Never even occurred to me. I, I knew a buddy that tried that though. He was doing he was a wrestler, a buddy of mine, and he was doing some kind of a promo and he wanted to have like a, a baseball announcer uh say something for him. So like he sent it to him and then I think the the guy caught on for pretty quickly that his intentions weren't just like I'm a fan and I want you to just send me a message like he's just like, "Yeah, man, like I'm going to say no to that because I don't know how you're going to use it. And, uh, I, you know, which is smart. Like, he's probably thinking, oh, you could be using this for commercial purposes, and that's not something I'm down with. Yeah. You're absolutely right. That is, uh, th- that, that's pretty savvy. Whereas if I was doing cameo, whatever you pay me to say, I'm going to say, I don't care. Oh, yeah. Do whatever you want with it. Well, whatever you want to do with it. Put it in the special video. Who cares? Right. Uh, that was pretty sweet. Oh, that was sweet. Gilbert <sighs> Gottfried's cameo is pretty entertaining. Yeah, and I and I and and I love the Mortal Kombat theme. Just love that. Ah, oh, man, I might have to watch that movie again. Yeah, I might have to watch the first movie again too. I didn't like the second original movie, but I I like the first one. The second original. So oh, there's geez. MK2. What was it Mortal Kombat oh, Annihilation? The sequel to the first yeah. one. Yeah, okay, I got you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It did have it did have animalities in it. Uh, I know. <laughs> It, which would I mean you know, uh, it, but the rest of it was just so bad. Got a recent uh, a recent poll, and um, it turns out that um, only nine percent say they regularly turn to professional critics for advice on what to watch, read, or play. Uh, where I'm zero percent when I when I turn to Steve to find out what to watch, read, or play. Yeah, well, I'm zero <laughs> percent when it comes to everybody. I'm no sheep, man. I just watch what I want. 
Yeah, that's a fact. And I, and I sometimes regret that those decisions. I probably should listen to people more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. It got to, finally I've gotten to a point, though. We would sometimes just rent movies, and you know, you're just curious, like okay, on like on demand, I'll say like the tomato meter, and when it doesn't have like the tomato meter on it, I have to question whether or not it's worth watching because that means that nobody's reviewed this thing or that it's just not worth even putting up there. I'm like, okay, this is this might just be a pile, and 100 percent of the time when I've done that, it was a pile. <laughs> You're right, man. Yeah, it's. It, I've taken a chance a couple times too, and I thought, oh, I just can't. If it doesn't have any, it's really odd. It's not like one particular critic I go for, but you're right. It's the tomato meter. It used to be there were critics that I would say, all right, like way back in the day, Siskel and Ebert. Mm-hmm. You know, I, if one of those two liked a movie or both didn't like the movie, it would really affect whether I wanted to see it or not. Uh, and now it's just, well, is it fresh or not? That's really the only thing I look at. I don't even, I'll only look at the audience score. I don't care about what the critics say. I mean, it's kind of funny to see like, oh boy, they really bla- blasted this movie. But for me, it's just what, what an audience, like the every, ev- the everyday Joe kind of a person. Cause I'm like, well, that's probably the person that falls in line with my taste as well. I'm not a critic. I'm not too cool for school when it comes to movies, but if 85, 90% of people think this movie is awesome, I might have to try it. Give it a shot. Well, if I like the genre, you're right, Steve. Right, I, right. I, I, yeah, it's that's the key. Is the audience helps me know you know that it's a genre boost. Like with Mortal Kombat, I, I, I have we seen what the audience thinks of it because when we first saw it, it was only the critics review, which gave it like little, yeah. little under sixty percent, which means it wasn't fresh. Critics give it fifty five percent, but the audience gives it eighty seven percent. See, that's the key, oh, wow. and that's I will one hundred percent agree with that. I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan, which means if I saw this and saw the audience liked it, I know the only people who are going to go watch the movie are Mortal Kombat. Combat fans, especially when it's not getting a fresh review from the critics. Now, out of curiosity, what did Thunder Force get on Rotten Tomatoes? Because to me, that's the litmus now. Oh, yeah. Is well, it better uh, than Thunder Force? Okay, well, Th- Thunder Force had to get 20% or less. On the audience, you think? No. Oh, yeah, audience? I bet audience gave it 30% or I'm less. I guess under 40 at least. Yeah. Oh, boy. 22% from the critics. Yeah. From the audience, 23%. And, okay, and that's I was with right. That, that's with over a thousand ratings too. Yeah, so yeah. that's a lot of people that are on my mm-hmm. side that think this movie <laughs> is a gigantic pile. Glad yeah, it, re- it, it really is. It, it, and again, I only because I'm a superhero junkie, so and right. I'm a Melissa McCarthy junkie. Um, that you know, that's why I watched it, and that's why I, I dealt with it. But I still believe Jason Bateman's portrayal in that movie is at least watch those scenes because he plays the most ridiculous character ever, and he does it fantastically. I think he's the best part of the. Movie. Movie. He has crab arms, and there's a, if you go on YouTube, there's an actual. They just have that scene of him at dinner with her explaining why he has crab arms, and to me, that's really that's all Perfect. you need to watch. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. And him running away though, running away sideways uh, during a crime because he's the crab is yeah. also pretty funny as well. <laughs> what about Sharknado? Yeah. Somebody said they said you know that's a terrible movie. Tons of people loved it though. Well, yeah, but it's 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 so bad, it's good. That's a whole different thing. I mean, you that's almost mystery science theater yes. kind of good. Yeah, it was a sci-fi movie, which are, I don't know if they're supposed to be terrible, but they really, really are. Yeah, the, what the hell? The original Sharknado somehow got 74% from the critics, but from the audience, 33%. Wow, that is bizarre. Ooh. I would have thought it would have been the other way around. You know what it is? Is I don't think any reputable critic actually reviewed that movie. It has to be like like critics that are like fans of crap. No, no, no. It looks like uh, some of the top critics include a person from the Washington Post who oh. gave it a good one. It said it's bloody good fun. Um, the uh, Independent in UK, New York Daily News, a lot of actual top critics, LA Times, AV Club, everyone loves it. See, I don't know if they knew, like the, even the actors knew that this was uh, in some way, shape, or form, they were creating something that was definitely a pile, but actually turned into a parody of a pile and therefore made it a good movie. Because, I mean, cause, I mean we've talked to Ian Zerling before, and he, you know, basically, I think he said he was doing it because, look, I just needed to keep my SAG medical yeah. thing up, and that's so why he I did stay this insured. Movie. Yeah, he, that's, yeah. The, that's the number one reason why he agreed to it, just so he could stay insured. And it turned out that because of the way everybody played that movie, uh, almost in a naked gun fashion, they all played it straight. Except I'm not too sure they realized 
they were doing a parody themselves. Dude, Whereas the I, movie Sharknado, they knew that it was a joke. It's not like no one was going into that expecting that they were going to get nods for Oscars. My well, my, my, my point being was is that when Leslie Nielsen was told to do The Naked Gun, uh -huh. he was literally told, I want you to do this movie as if this was as serious of a movie as you ever did before because it has to be played that way for it to be funny. Whereas that's what I'm saying is they intentionally knew what they were doing with the Naked Gun movies. I don't know if anybody knew this is what they were doing with Sharknado. And yet it still came out to be a, a darn fun movie. Oh, someone has a good question for us. You have to pick okay. one. Godzilla versus Kong or Mortal Kombat. Which one's better? Which one would you actually recommend? Oh. You know, oh, I'm I, leaning towards Mortal Kombat. Me too, because I, I'm just not a big Godzilla fan the way I am a Mortal Kombat fan. I enjoyed uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, but I feel like Mortal Kombat was a way more fun ride. And it was less story. Yes. I really think that the story, uh, you know, I mean, I have a couple of friends of mine that really hated Kano and thought he was way over the top. He was I, one of my favorite characters. Well, and you know what? You don't ever want to meet my friend. He's going to hate you. Well, yeah, uh, I never want to meet your friends anyway. So, yeah, 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 they, uh, they I felt that too. He, he was, he, he was, uh, I, I don't know what to make of Kano. I mean, I really don't. He was I mean, comedic I, relief. Yeah, I felt like he was, yeah, he was a. He was definitely an old stereotype of uh, he of toxic. He's definitely as a stereotype of toxic masculinity. I'll tell you that. I mean, if you want to know what that is and what that means, watch Kano because he's that guy. I mean, you know, he's he's comic relief, but he's definitely that old school misogynist kind of whatever kind of guy that they. But you know, they played him for humor, and they surely didn't take him seriously. So they didn't make him a hero. That's for sure. Yeah, I think that was the whole point. It's like he's a joke kind of a guy. In that. Yeah, you know, I, I thought that the character was super funny. And, and yeah. like, because he was just such a over the top ridiculous character. Yeah, I feel like he was a little too over the top for me. I I, I think that he became less funny uh, to the point uh, for me. But you know, I mean, everybody has their standards. Well, so, you and your friend go and have fun with whatever. Well, I, my, that you guys well my friend had a he had a much worse response than I do. I just thought it was a bit much with Kano, but it wasn't enough to the point where I would like I'd say I hate the movie. And frankly, especially you know, when he found end, out he had his powers, I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, well. Yeah, he he's a douche, no he's doubt about it. He's a great douche. He's a, he's a douche. That's a fact. Uh, Rev, how about you? Uh, Mortal Kombat or Godzilla? Well, see, I haven't seen Mortal Kombat yet, but... <laughs> but still, it. give us your opinion. Well, oh, that's I, the I, thing, I though. I forgot he hasn't but, seen it. But, yeah, I, I mean, I liked Godzilla versus Kong, but just what everyone is saying about Mortal Kombat and how ridiculous it is, and I have a love for that old stuff. I, I, I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat at this point, just because even though I haven't seen it, I'm still really excited to see it. And you guys are actually giving it, uh, like, hyping it up for me. So I'm excited. It's I a am fun surprised. movie. So you're going to watch it before, uh, how, how long is it going to take you to watch this then? Yeah, I'll probably watch it uh, soon. Okay. <laughs> this is one of the movies all of right, all then. the ones that were also on HBO Max or, or streaming service where I was like, all right, well, this one's not, like, you, you, I wasn't watching thinking, okay, I get why they didn't wait for this to be put in the theaters. Like, this was, you know, because some of the movies that have been put on theaters and also put on the streaming services, I'm like, I, yeah, I'd be annoyed if I went to the theaters to see this. Whereas with Mortal Kombat, if I was in the theaters watching this, I would have enjoyed it also. Oh, yeah, it would have been fun. And I, again, I wish I saw it on the big screen because there's, there's some good special effects and there's good, you know, there's good cinematography for some of the shots they had. It was, you know, it was well done in those respects. Uh, yeah, you're right, Steve. I would have been fine seeing that in the movie, too. But yeah, if I saw Wonder Woman 84 in the movies, I would have been. I, I, no. That might have been the first movie I would have got up and left. Still hating Wonder Woman. Oh, right. yeah. Well, if we're talking about the HBO Max movies. <laughs> the HBO uh, and, Max movies. And the Godzilla movie, honestly, look, the Godzilla Kong stuff was great. The humans on it, I really wish that someone just would have stepped on them at the beginning of the movie. Then, yeah. Then, yeah. Oh. There needs to be like a super cut of just the monster fighting on that one. And that's the difference. With Mortal Kombat, there are, there are humans, but the story to me is more compelling with these humans than they were in, in uh, Godzilla. You know, especially at the beginning of Mortal Kombat. It's kind of a cool story that sort of connects, you know, certain characters and gives some lore to certain characters. And I, I and also one of the actors, uh, Steve, the guy that played the, uh, that dude in the beginning of the movie with the family, mm -hmm. uh, way in the beginning. Yeah. That guy's a great, I've loved him in every movie he's been in. So I really like that actor. Uh, so I, I was so so stoked to see that he was playing an iconic 
Mortal Kombat person. And, um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I think that's why Mortal Kombat gets the lean for me. The story was much more interesting with the humans than in Godzilla. And what else are you going to watch? You're going to watch Nomadland or My Octopus Teacher? No, you're hey, going to watch, hey, you're going to watch Mortal Kombat. You do not hate on My Octopus Teacher. That is a fantastic, adorable movie about a man and his octopus. I don't even did, know what it is. Didn't that win something? I know Nomadland. It won an Oscar for Best Documentary, and it's yeah. fantastic. So wait, the movie's actually about. It's a, a guy who has an octopus? Yeah, well, sort of. It's it's a guy who, uh, in his childhood, would swim these deep reefs in, uh, like, South Africa. Oh, you asked him, Steve. He goes back to that, and he discovers that there's this little octopus, and he becomes a friend with it over the course of its life, over a year, bonds with it, and it's so cute. Huh. It's, wow. it's an well, actual... Maybe will get me ready for the Kraken. Exactly. And it's really amazing. All right. It's so on this Netflix. Is a, yeah, it's on Netflix. Oh, is it? Oh, all right. And, and 100% you should watch this. You know, it's honestly, my, uh, of all the movies I see that won Oscars, that's the only one now I think I'd even be willing to give a chance to. Because what the hell is yeah. Nomad Land? Uh, it's about a woman running, driving around in like a Winnebago or something like that, meeting all the people that do that for their lives. Octopus Teacher's way better. Mm. Have you seen both? No. Okay. Ah! I love how you're telling us that movies are better than other movies and you, you haven't seen them. I mean, you asked him, what did he pick over Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Like King Kong movie. Damn hypocrite. Well, no. No, no, I, I understand that, but I didn't know he hadn't seen Mortal Kombat yet. I was kind of hoping he would have seen it by now. But you're right, Steve. We, I, I shouldn't have asked him that one. But now he's just Mr. Critic. Let me tell you what movie's better than the other movie that I haven't seen. Hello, this has an octopus in it that is adorable. I'm not it's saying be it's better not than a, anything else. Okay, uh, you know what? This, this is you know what? This is why I can't talk to your generation anymore. I'm leaving. No, fine, I'm Grandpa. Not, well, I haven't yeah. seen a single movie that won an Academy Award. I'm just looking at all the award winners from this past weekend, and there's not a single one that I, some of them I haven't even heard of. Actually, yeah, 95% I, of them I've never heard of. I wasn't even interested in the Oscars this year because I really haven't gone to movies, and I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a fair test of what's good or not good out there because yeah. nothing was really released the way they wanted to. I mean, I hear Nomadland's a good movie, but I feel like, I don't know, it doesn't. It just doesn't call to me, but I think the director is, a, I, I think it was an award-winning sort of or, or a, a first-time moment for the director, mm -hmm. I guess. So that's cool. I mean, it's good that she wants something. You know, it's nice when your work is appreciated. <laughs> and then but I don't know anything about it. The father was a big one, too, at Anthony Hopkins. Oh, really? I hear Anthony. that one's like a gut punch. Oh, I don't want to it's a man refuses all assistance from his daughter as he ages. Like that sounds fun. Oh yeah. yeah most of the time uh, they're all depressing. That's why yeah. I liked my octopus teacher because it was fun. Okay, yeah, well, I, my I octopus heard... teacher's the one. Yeah, if only the, 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 the man who refused assistance befriended an octopus. Forget about it. Right. Like, got in a van. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what you need on a cross country trip. Perfect. Boom. Boom. Right, Oscar we've got winner. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's a question for you. Why is a teen's rant on Snapchat? Going to the Supreme Court? Oh, I'll tell you why. At 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Spend less time in the laundry room and more time doing the things you love. Introducing the Samsung Smart Top Load Laundry Pair. Now available at Lowe's. The washer's large capacity means you can fit more in every load. Plus, its super speed setting washes a full load in only 28 minutes. Shop the smart washer that will streamline laundry day, backed by Lowe's Price Promise. Based on using super speed on a normal cycle with an 8-pound load, terms apply. See Lowe's.com slash price promise for details. U.S. only. Everything is better electrified. Like the guitar, toothbrushes, or cars. And Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. You can use electric when you want it or gas when you need it. It's your journey. Evolve it beyond the pump in the 2022 Tucson or Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. When we think about something that brings out the best in us, it usually involves helping someone else. By donating plasma at a Griffel Center, you can help save millions of lives and show your good side to the world. You'll join thousands of people who donate safely each week, so patients get the plasma-derived medicines they rely on. And you'll be rewarded up to $1,000 your first month. Learn more at grifflesplasma.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a high school cheerleader from Pennsylvania, and she was suspended from her squad after posting a profanity-laced message to her Snapchat. 
And now the Supreme Court is going to hear arguments in what some are calling a landmark free speech case. Would you ever think that a snap from a teenager would end up being a a, 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 a Supreme Court issue? Not at all. This is bizarre. Yeah. Um, uh, her name is Brandy, and this happened back in 2017 when she was frustrated that she didn't make the varsity squad. So she sent a, a snap to her friends of a picture of her giving the middle finger with the caption, quote, F school, F softball, a softball, F cheer, F everything. I don't disagree. Screw and all I'm those not, things. <laughs> did she use the real F word? I yes. don't know. Yeah, okay, she did. Yes. All right, so that's, the, the, you, no doubt about it, that's going to get a lot of people upset. Uh, one of the coaches at the school discovered the post, and Brandy was banned from the squad for a year. Did she know who she was sending the snap to? I mean, because, you know, you, you could pick. Do you think she accidentally sent, like, is she, like, maybe Snapchat friends with, like, her coach or something along those lines and didn't realize it or didn't care? That's a really good question with Snapchat, because Snapchat, it's, it goes away. Plus, you can tell if somebody makes a copy of it, right? So they, yep. somebody could have taken a picture of it to show the coach. But somehow the coach discovered it, as opposed to, it didn't say the coach oh, was sent it. I bet so, it was one of her rivals, and they probably uh, screenshot it. And yeah. I don't know why I'm creating a whole new plot for Mean Girls Part 3. <laughs> yeah, you've got it, my friend. Yeah. This time the Supreme Court's involved. This, yeah, Mean Girls, we go to the Supreme Court. Uh, her parents say, you know what, they got a lawyer. And the case is going to the Supreme Court to determine whether schools have the right to punish pupils for what they say off campus. They didn't even I get hear- a lawyer from the ACLU. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You get that. That's who you get involved. Because the ACLU, they uh, they take freedom pretty seriously. Uh, here's Brandy's lawyer talking all about this. While this is just uh, an expression of frustration that I think all of us can relate to, you know, punctuated with some F-bombs for, for, for emphasis, what the court is going to decide in this case and what's really at stake is the free speech rights of 50 million young people who go to public schools. And it's, you know, it's not just about whether or not you can have a profane rant on a weekend, but it's about whether schools are going to be able to punish kids for saying things that are controversial, unpopular, or even just critical of the school. Pardon me, I, I, I mean, I'm probably going to sound like an old fuddy-duddy in this Here we go, here we go. Here we go, baby. Pardon me, like, this is just a valuable lesson of what life is going to be like for this person. Like, yeah, you have the, you're, you're free to say what you want. What does the old say? It's like you're free from, you're, 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 you have free speech, but you're also... Yeah, that doesn't mean you're free from the consequences. Like you, if you, if she did this, let's say in a real world situation, a job, and goes on and just says "f my job," and the boss finds out and they fire you, when you'd be like, "Well, I'm the dumbass that posted that." You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it sucks for her, and it's stupid at the end of the day. But this could be one of those lessons in life that she maybe needs. Like, you know, yeah, you can say "f all these things," but that if that gets in the wrong hands, you might have to face the repercussions from that. All right, now we've heard from a Gen Xer. Yeah. I'm wondering if uh, Danny, uh, Vicky, or if, uh, you know, Joey or Sarah have an opinion about this. Um, uh, you know, if you share Steve's opinion. And please understand, I think it's silly. Like, I, I, I do want to make that clear. Like, I don't think this is like, you know, something that should even go to the Supreme Court. I don't even think she should have got really into big trouble for it. But I also could see this as a life lesson. It, it's it's a tricky thing because like I feel like I've been I've grown up to learn like you need to be, have a sense of professionalism kind of like what you're saying it's going to be a good you know thing to learn when you're older you can't be doing this kind of thing but at the same time why is it that as a society we have to be on twenty four seven our our best in everything we do especially in like a private situation like a Snapchat or our social media pages if they're private let's say like I I should be in theory yeah, allowed to post point. whatever I want yeah. I'm not on it's the like job a group chat yeah it's sense. like why do I have to be a hundred percent everywhere like it's my life doesn't revolve around work you know like I feel like that's kind of sad that we have to be work like the mentality of work a hundred percent of the time I think that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, and she's a kid. Yeah. I mean, if you if you if you expect a kid not to go to their friends and say f this that and the other thing because they're pissed off about something, and that's the weird thing for you and I, Steve, is that I feel like you and I would know that Snapchat's a little too public, even if or a, there's something about it as opposed to I'm just talking to you in the hall as opposed to I post something. But like Vicky said, um, you know, and and people her age and younger, they don't see it that way. It's like we, it's just like talking to a friend posting on snapchat it's not public to them really especially if they've only sent it to their friends no i mean when you're saying i get what you're saying like because i think if it was like on a facebook where it's more public in a sense and you kind of i 
I just personally would just not do that kind of stuff. Right. But I could, yeah. Like one person says, I saw it on the news. One of her friends saw it, took the picture of it, and that kid's parent was also the coach, and that's how they found out. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, and I think that, that that's that not really, a friend. And as adults, that's an enemy. We you know it, it, look, Brene Brown talks about like you want to teach your children you don't tell them anything because they never listen to you. It's what you do. Your actions is what really influence your kids' lives. So the actions right now, she expresses herself. I mean, you're supposed to express yourself in venting and swearing. If you watch that wonderful Nicholas Cage documentary, swearing is so <laughs> good at relieving stress and tension, and it, 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 they've proven that saying certain words actually relieves more pain, makes you recover from that. And so all of this is there, and yet the adults are saying yeah but don't do this instead hopefully you'll get a drinking problem or a drug problem that way you'll handle all your problems rather than just venting in the moment it's a bad example i think to set uh for children to see that they can't express themselves or get mad or angry for a moment it, it, you know especially when she did it privately she didn't do it in front of the school board so it says we signed student conduct codes to be in sports in high school that girl knew that yeah. Person says, F this radio show and F the radio. Also, F fried chicken. Just kidding. Have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, what the hell did fried chicken do to you? I couldn't send screwing us, but yeah, come on. I like fried chicken. Yeah, and I, I, I'm not a big fan of the student conduct codes, by the way. I, have, I never have been because I think they're massively restrictive to a group of individuals that are growing up and they're learning and they're trying to figure out how to be in life. They're going from being me-centered to, you know, beyond the me-centered thing. And they sit there and express it, it. Really, it is the dumbest thing ever, student conduct codes. It is, it's ridiculous to me. Okay, so here's the thing. This happens to your kid. Are you going to, would you be like these parents and sue? Oh, yeah. You would. I mean, if I wasn't lazy, if I wasn't, see, the trouble is. Lazy parent here. I'd look at my daughter. She's like, Dad, I can't believe it. They kicked me off the cheerleading and softball squad. I'm like, I learned a lesson, didn't she, kid? Now let let your father watch his wrestling. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's one. I mean, in a way, she is going to learn a lesson from you. It's like, ah, you know what? Don't be stupid next time. Yeah. don't, (laughs) Don't spout off and say stupid things on social media. Problem solved. Yeah. See, I was the big mouth. That was my problem. I was the big mouth, so I can relate to Brandy 100%. What about you, Danny? Lily comes home. She calls. She's like, Dan. She's going to call you Danny. She goes, Daddy. <laughs> oh, Danny. <laughs> I mean, it sounds the same. So, what's, yeah. what's her thing? What's her, like, what, what does she love to do? Um, like an activity. Activity right now, she likes to do gymnastics. Okay, oh, for so crying out, she, the, 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 she likes to go on and do her Facebook stuff with Danny. Facebook well, Live. I'm talking about something where she does it with other people, like kids her age. Of course, oh, yeah, yeah, gymnastics. Thing. So she's doing gymnastics. She, somehow she gets doesn't get to do the the pole vault, sure. and she just goes on. <laughs> this is like f pole vaulting, f this, and then they they kick her off the gymnastics team. Okay, yeah. are you going to sue? Ah. First of all, the pole vault, I think, is track and field. But anyway, I know what you mean. The balance beam, let's say. They got pads. You land on pads. The pole vault, yes. No, I'm not. Uh, the balance beam. Yes. Yeah, she that's got kids. It. She says that's the balance right, beam. Yeah, no, you're, no, I'm not, not going to sue. <laughs> oh, that's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. child. I'm sorry. You know, when she's throwing the shot put in uh, gymnastics, uh, what do you think is happening? When she's doing the javelin, Danny. Javelin. She took out <laughs> one of her classmates' eyes and okay. said, F javelins. Oh, wow. oh, God bless the USA. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Not suing. You're not suing. No, well, I mean at that point, I feel like I'd just be like, "Look, we're not going to do this anymore. We're going to find a different gym." Oh, oh, yeah. take, take, just peace out. Yeah. Take, take our business elsewhere. Yeah, we'll go somewhere else. It's not that far. We can drive 15 more minutes to a different gym. I think it's. it's I mean, what's interesting to me, Steve, is she's obviously angry because something negative happened in her life. Which, of course, who doesn't get angry over stuff like that? And the fact that she's not given that sort of leeway, like someone doesn't pull her in and go, "Look, I get you're pissed. Let's just not use that language next time, you know, if you can." I mean, why do we have to go through this ridiculous thing of banning it for a year? So now she's got to go to the Supreme Court. What happened to reason in society? That's what gets me. Is like, is it unreasonable to expect a child to get pissed off and throw up a tantrum over something that they feel is important that's negative? No. Yeah, it's this so one is like there's like that weird grayish area for me because it is kind of private but kind of a public. It, if it was Facebook and it was on a public forum, I could see that being even. Uh, uh, I would have less of it. I'd be like, yeah, dude, you just learned a lesson. But with this one, I almost feel like she was just trying to share it with her friends and vent to her friends. And then one of her friends just screwed her. Because I, I was like, oh, well, what if she did like a group chat? But then that same friend could be like, hey, mom, dad, look at this group chat I got or this text message I got. Which is and, lame, and by the way. that would suck if she lost out on something because of a text that she was sharing. That's a violation, by the way, of trust. I, the father it's a himself. Life lesson, trust no one. 
Well, and the father, the coach should have said to his daughter, you know what, you shouldn't have showed me this. This was not a conversation I was meant to have. Instead, that father shows a horrible example to his daughter showing, oh, betrayal is fine and violating somebody's trust is fine. The parents in this situation of the coach, I should say, Coach really got butt hurt. They saw this and got butt hurt, yeah. I bet. And this is a horrible example of parenting, by the way, on, on every level. I, I, yeah, I, yeah I, honestly... I sue the hell out of them. Everybody involved. Sue the hell out of them. Sue the hell out of them. Because you know what? That's a life lesson too, Steve. If you're an idiot parent and idiots, you know, idiot governments that or whatever, idiot leaders, you know what? You need to be shown. Somebody will get fired for this probably it's, now that it's gone to the Supreme Court. And if they lose, somebody will get fired for this. And, it, and, and you know what? That's the ultimate life lesson, in my opinion. Firing someone for this. Oh, yeah. The coach, the coach should definitely be fired. The coach is an idiot. Because you're setting horrible examples and boundary issues right there. See, that's why I couldn't be a judge in the Supreme Court. I just oh, feel like, yeah. you I, I, just, guys, really? You're going to come to me with a Snapchat problem? Go away. <laughs> well, yeah, no doubt about it. I wouldn't go to you with this at all. <laughs> you know what? And I've, I've recently been given, you know, when we talked about that cocaine teacher the other day? Yes. I am getting grief from one of our old school listeners who, honestly, I just wish this person would stop listening. Because they're one of the, you know, you know this group of people that he belongs to. And he is such an idiot sometimes with, with his opinions. It's like, there's no forgiveness Scott for Scott Service and the manager? From Scott Maryland? Service. I cannot believe that Scott Service has given me grief. But, you know, it's like... You know, it's, if you don't sit there and be and basically just hate on everybody, it's like somebody who's got a cocaine issue has got an addiction problem. And yes, there's no doubt about that. No one should be teaching our kids doing cocaine. Nobody thinks that's a thing. And if you think well, that's a for thing, yourself, I'm saying that's the best way to do it. But, you know, I you mean, fly people, through that syllabus in one week. The rest of the time, enjoy whatever you want to do for the rest of the year. All right. Well, you know what? You're a teacher of the month at Thank that you. point. And no doubt. Look at the students. I love you. But I mean, you know, when, when someone's got addiction issues, I think we have to be at least more understanding and go, yeah, you know what? No way that person should teach anymore. But should we hate them forever and basically say that their lives are over and they sh- and, and we should just exclude no. them from society? Well, that's what people want to do. They're so divisive where they go, get out and never come back. And it's like, we can't be that way. We have to give people a chance to be forgiven or otherwise our ra- our entire race, the human race is effed. And Brandy knows what she's talking about. F. All those people that think that way. You know, I think this texture might be right. It all could have been solved rather easily. Maybe she shouldn't suck at softball so much. <laughs> Problem solved. Well, there is that. You know what? You're absolutely right. <laughs> Hadn't even thought about that. You know what? That really is the answer. But That's then again, what I would say. The dad she comes over like, well, if you would actually play catch with me more often, we wouldn't have this problem. Now, would we? Yeah. I just want to know how bad she sucks at that sport because we've seen how many people get millions of dollars and they suck at their sport. I don't want to look at any former Mariners, by the way, when I'm talking about this. There we go. Well, that was a, uh, well, I think we've solved it. We solved it. So if I want to just say F the company, I shouldn't do it on Snapchat. Don't do it on Snapchat. Is there a new thing, Steve? Is there, is yeah, there a new Chatterbox. Thing? What is that Ch- called? Oh, yeah. There it is. Clubhouse. That too. <laughs> Chatterbox. <laughs> to see. Very close to Clubhouse. Chatterbox should be the name yeah. of that Clubhouse thing because it's all you do is talk. You don't <laughs> actually post, sure. you don't type anything. I think there's a naughty site that has somewhat the same name though. So Oh, Chatterbox is uh, that's a whole different thing if it's a naughty site. Well, then I'd rather be on that one. Can you send me an invite to that one? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Well, we've, we've learned a lot today. Uh, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. Who wielded a sword named Excalibur? Hercules. No. Um, <laughs> Thor. No. Oh, crap. What's the guy's name? <laughs> Aquaman. Aquaman, uh, no. I, I'm pretty sure Aquaman was uh, one of the Knights of the Round Table, but he wasn't the big boy. He wasn't <laughs> King Arthur. Yeah. I, I can see how you got confused, though, yeah, Steve. Right? Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want a shot at beating Steve, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We'll play Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, One of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going except for child support uh, and stop your creditors from continuing 
continuing on with garnishments of your bank accounts, your wages, um, and in most cases, we'll discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.